A few months back I was staying the night at one of my friend's house. He lives on the far edge of a town in Utah. He still had neighbors around but there was a lot of forest around and it was next to a canyon. I don't know if the scenery helps to the story but I will try to list every detail of my encounter. I was staying the night and my girlfriend also came over to hang out for a while. We hang out and everything is fine and fun and great. 1am rolls around and I had work at 6am in another town about 30 minutes away. So I said hey maybe you should leave so I can get some sleep before work. And at this time my friend went to sleep and it was just me and her. As we are walking to her car I started feeling uneasy like I could hear something. We get to the driver's side of her car and I give her a hug goodbye. As I am hugging my girlfriend I look behind her and am struck with shock and fear as I see a creature maybe 8 to 9 feet tall. It was standing next to a cherry tree on the side of my friend's driveway. It was bipedal, it was very skinny. The moon was out so I could see the creature clearly but not so much color details. The legs were bent backwards like deer legs or like the back moose legs. It slouched a lot and I still couldn't see its face as it was in the leaves of the cherry tree which has to be 11 to 12 feet tall. I remember not being able to talk much except goodbye to my girlfriend. I don't know why but I couldn't tell her to look behind her. Before I let go of her though I saw the creature move. It took off running towards the tree line. What absolutely baffled my mind was the speed of the creature. It looked impossible, as if it blurry when it started running. I remember it looking right at me through the leaves even though I couldn't see its face. What was the worst thing about the experience was the emotions attached to seeing what I saw. I felt like my confidence and emotions were attacked. I have never felt the feeling of fear like this before and I have been charged by full-grown brown bears. After my girlfriend got into her car I stood in that very spot from when I hugged her until she left the driveway. I don't know if it was more out of fear or making sure she left safely. I didn't know what to do so I slowly walked over to my car and got it. I called my friend multiple times and he was asleep and didn't answer. I looked out my window after several minutes and I looked to the left and saw my friend's cat Avery. And I tried to think logically, if my friend's cat, which probably has better senses than me, is out here then I am probably seeing things and it was safe. So I got out and stood next to Avery. Next thing I know it sounds like there's a Clydesdale horse running through deep growth of the forest. Avery staring running for the door and I sprinted faster than Avery and got inside. For the next three hours I sobbed and cried like I did when I my dog died when I was 12. The fear I felt was indescribably powerful. I also remember it had long arms and when it ran it used all limbs. Please someone tell me if this is a real creature. It gives me goosebumps to this day talking about it. And writing this brought me to tears. Just thinking about is scary. Possible skinwalker slash Wendigo sounds? I live in South Dakota, there are lots of woods here but I live kind of out in the middle of nowhere next to a military base with no trees and a few houses, so this seems strange but I was in my room one night, when I heard these twisted moaning and groaning sounds. It was creepy to listen to because I've never heard of these types of sounds before, we have pet horses but this sounded way off. It sounded deep, but would change how high it was and sounded almost mimic from a human, it sounded in pain. It lasted for a while, near my window and I looked outside and didn't see anything. So I just stayed quiet until it stopped. I haven't heard noises like this since. Edit, yes I know the difference between a Wendigo and Skinwalker. I just posted it here because this is the community I joined for that sort of stuff and I can't exactly tell the difference between the sounds they both make. But yes I know they are a completely different subject from each other Lamau, I'm sorry if I offended anyone. <coughs> Childhood Skinwalker Experience I remember the night really vividly. I was about five. I used to live in an older house that backed directly into these deep woods, miles of just trees. 
My mother and I always enjoyed walking through the woods. One night we went on what we called an adventure and went in for a walk around dusk. This wasn't unusual for us. We weren't far from home but it had become dark and started to thunder. We decided to head back. When we got to the clearing that my house was right above we heard something in the brush behind us. It sounded like a wounded animal at first, a deep groan. When I turned to look it was a large creature of some kind, be it I was very small though. It was dark and storming so I couldn't get a good look before my mom picked me up. As she was running up the hill to get to our backyard with me in her arms I could hear heavy breathing as if it was right on my neck and something galloping closer as though it was just behind us. I was facing backwards in my mom's arms and I opened my eyes one last time to see something that looked very large even when I was on higher ground. She ran up the hill until we got into the house. I never really enjoyed those woods, sometimes at night I'd hear yelling or screaming. My old German Shepherd was always very uptight in the clearing I witnessed the creature in. She would bark and growl at what we thought was nothing. To this day my mother has told me it was a coyote but I'm unsure as I do more research into skin. Walker slash Wendigos. I'm no expert on the matter but from what I've read, this memory I have is eerily similar to what skinwalkers do. It was maybe 2 a.m. on a Saturday, my friends and I had left a party and couldn't go back inside my friend's house because one of us was throwing up and we didn't want to clean it or hold him over a toilet. My friends decide to drive and get fast food, and I am stuck with the unconscious drunk, currently sitting on a chair we brought from inside, on a four-way stop street. I'm just minding my business and I suddenly hear a loud woman's cry for help. It sounds like it's coming from an alleyway near me, so I take a look. It's pitch black, but the screams are in that direction. Still faint though, pretty deep into the alley. I think about how some lady could be getting raped or mugged and started to panic, I was 15 at the time and maybe 130 pounds. Not confident in my fighting chances lol. I decided to run back to my comatose friend and he was too zonked to hear the voice. The cries were pretty random in frequency, but went on for about 10 minutes maybe 20 screams total. Help. And only that word. I decide that I can't leave my friend and I call my friends who left to get food to tell them what happened while the cries were ongoing and they agreed with my concern. Eventually the calls for help stopped, and 10 minutes after, my friends were back. They were too loose and drunk to really care about what I told them, especially since the cries stopped before they got back. This memory sticks with me vividly six years later. Phoenix is the fifth largest populated city in the US, a well-sized city with a large downtown of skyscrapers. So when most of the encounters I read are based in the desert and not the suburbs, I question the situation. I have also read that there is no reason these skinwalkers wouldn't be able to roam a city especially one in a desert and indigenously rooted state like Oz. So for now I'm just curiously spooked. Luring me in. A little detail first. I live in the Ozark Mountains. I have about 63 acres of land on a mountain, and I'm about 20 minutes from both towns near me. My house was originally a cabin built in the 1800s that someone had built on too. I don't have much more knowledge of the house because all the paperwork burned in a courthouse fire. Weird stuff has always happened in and around the house, but those are stories for a different time. Last year around February I had a huge argument with my husband, and decided to go hike up the mountain to cool off. My husband went to work on his jeep, and my five dogs and I went up the mountain. Normally my dogs run around through the trees, but they always keep me in their sights. This time they stuck very close to me. I noted it and just assumed it was because they knew how upset I was. We made it to the clearing and it just seemed so still up there. I felt a little uneasy, but ignored it and climbed up our deer stand. I sat up there for about 20 minutes, took some pictures, and I looked down to see my dogs at the base of the tree standing in different directions and alert stances. 
The feeling of dread washed over me. I scrambled down the deer stand and walked across the clearing with dogs in tow. I did not want to run because we have predators. All of a sudden I could hear loud whistling. I stopped in my tracks. My dogs are now on high alert and all staring behind me to the left. My husband's voice came from that direction. He was screaming my name like something was wrong. I can't not describe the fear that came over me. I continued to walk down the mountain, and walked over to my husband and asked him what was wrong. He looked at me confused, and told me he had no idea what I was talking about. I kinda forgot about this moment until today. I woke up to loud whistling outside of my house around 4.40 to 5 a.m. It was the same whistle I used to call my dogs home. Parts of the whistle was wrong. All of my dogs were inside, and my husband was still asleep. Part of me told myself to go check it out, but a voice in my head said to stay in bed. I listened to the voice. Edit, oh I found out I was wrong about the time frame. My phone said I took these pictures last November not February. Apologies. Possible skinwalker in Oklahoma? This took place in mid-July this past year in Okima, Oklahoma. My boyfriend and I live in the Edmond slash OKC area but we had come down to Okima with a few friends for the annual Woodyfist Music Festival to celebrate Woody Guthrie. The day was pretty normal, we unpacked our tent from my Xterra it was a small two-person tent and it looked silly next to giant ten-person tent our friends were staying in. We were camping out in this giant wide open field. Near the desolate road there was a small house erected with showers and a pool behind it. The rest of the field was filled with tents. I call my mother to check in with her because I had missed a call from her while driving and we continue to unpack our stuff, cooler, guitars etc. The camping spots were pretty spread out except for ours because we shared a camping spot with our friends so we almost literally shared a tent wall with them. Anyways into the night we go. We attend the festival in a neighboring field and come back to the tents around 12 colon 30 slash 1 am, chat with our friends in the other tent and then head back to ours to go to sleep. I wake up for apparently no reason at around 4 15 am, most of the campground is quiet though I can hear singing and guitar being played a fair distance behind us. The way our tent was set up facing west from the back of the tent was the whole of the campground, we were a bit on the outskirts. Facing east from the front of the tent was a wide open field with overgrown fence and a barbed wire fence maybe 100 feet away from us. I'm awake, trying to go back to sleep when I hear something calling my name, it sounds far away but also as if it was right in my ear. I had no idea where the sound was coming from at first. Upon further inspection the voice seemed to be coming from the field facing the front of the tent. I honestly have no idea how I came to this conclusion. Initially I passed it off as maybe being sleep deprived or possibly sleep paralysis. I don't have a history of sleep paralysis but I genuinely have no idea what this was. I turned to look at my boyfriend, whom is sleeping soundly, and about 30 seconds later I hear my name being called again. But this time the thing is asking me to come to it. I finally figure out what it sounds like. The voice sounds almost like my mother's voice but it's not quite right. There is an undertone to it that I can't pinpoint but it just doesn't sound like my mother. I feel cold, vulnerable and terrified rather than under the warm and protective aura of my mother. I instantly freeze. I cannot move a muscle. I am sitting upright in the tent now just frozen. I can't move or make a sound to wake up my boyfriend. I just sit and listen. I still can't exactly figure out where the sound is coming from as it switches between the field and right in my ear. This goes on for 30 minutes. The only part of my body that I could move were my eyes. My boyfriend has a calculator watch on his left arm that he had dangling out of his sleeping bag and I could barely see the clock from my outmost peripheral vision. It called my name and asked me to come to it for a half hour. Then it stopped as quickly as it had begun. I still didn't move a muscle. 
Eventually after about 15 minutes of silence I laid back down. I took this time to note that all of the cicadas had stopped chirping. There were no bugs, no frogs, no birds nothing. Not even the guitar was playing anymore. I suddenly hear the voice again but it sounds like it is coming from right outside the tent almost although still far away. This time the voice is demanding that I come to it and demanding that I come out now. I lay frozen on the ground as this goes on for another 15 minutes. Then it stops. I fall back asleep almost immediately, practically almost on top of my boyfriend. I didn't hear the voice again for the rest of the night. I didn't mention it until months later. I woke up and convinced myself that it was probably just a dream. But I'm not so sure. After learning more about the paranormal and talking about this with my friends I'm almost 100% sure that I had an encounter with a skinwalker. This is my first ever post on Reddit. I had to tell this story after rehashing it with a good friend of mine earlier tonight. All thoughts and comments are much appreciated. I am still trying to figure out what I heard that night. I genuinely think I might have seen a skinwalker outside of my house. One day I just couldn't sleep for the life of me, and I found myself up at 2 AM staring out of my window, and for reference, across my window is a fairly busy road, and then it's just forest. As I'm staring out of my window, I spotted a few deer crossing the road from my window, so I got up, and went to a different window to go look at them for a bit forgot to mention my room is on the third floor of my house, and as I'm watching these deer, I watch as one walk slowly across the street, and by slowly, I mean slow. As soon as it gets to the forest, it stops and just stands there, and I'm struck with a sort of paralyzing fear, and that's when the deer began to walk normally into the forest, but not before I catch a glimpse of a figure that seems to be 7 to 8 feet tall with a bony looking face, and keep in mind I'm a good 40 feet away from this whole ordeal, and as I see this figure disappear, I'm stuck standing there, petrified. It took a good 30 to 40 seconds for me to be able to move again, and after that, I got back to bed, and slept like a rock. I might have just been tired but I swear that's what I saw. Any thoughts? Are we being lured out? Two months ago my boyfriend and I moved out of a bigger city to the woods. We've both lived in the country before and my hometown is the next town over. We both feel comfortable here but since we've moved things have gotten progressively weirder. We live on about two acres in mid-Michigan and behind the house is nothing but woods. We have two animals, one year Doberman and a four years Maine Coon, big breed cat. It is currently midwinter here and we've been hit with a few good snowstorms since Christmas. Also the house is surrounded by motion sensing lights and cameras. Okay, context over. The first week we moved in there was what sounded like someone pacing back and forth in the tree line. When we called out to it there was no reply but the pacing did not stop either. This continued not every night but often. The next week. Whatever it was had also started murmuring to itself in the woods. This creeped me the hell out and we stopped hanging out on the patio after that. Next, the motion lights would randomly turn on, not thinking much of it because we do live in the woods and animals such as deer frequent our backyard, I just ignored it. Yet over the next few nights it got to the point where the lights just don't ever turn off, like something is constantly triggering them. Remember, we're in Michigan. There's been a good coat of snow on the ground for weeks now. Theoretically, we should see the tracks from whatever is keeping the lights on right? However there are no tracks in the snow whatsoever, not even deer. Since this our animals have started to act strange. The Doberman sits at the back door and barks. Not just any bark but the kind that makes you feel like he's about to tear someone's head off. I've literally never heard him this amped up and we've had him since 8 weeks. Yet when you open the door to let him out he becomes timid. He won't wander too far into the back and he'll never go to the tree line. Sometimes he won't go outside at all, 
It's like all he wants to do is sit there and make his presence known. The Maine Coon is just as interested in the backyard. Constantly staring off into the distance. If he's finally broken his gaze then he's following me around meowing at me as if Hess trying to tell me something. Tonight was the scariest I've ever experienced. Our backslider is in the living room and just outside is our patio. We're sitting on the couch winding down for the night, both animals and my boyfriend are all asleep in the living room with me but I'm up, watching TikTok. Then I hear what sounded like our dog outside whimpering, in distress, like he's cold or hurt. However, I am looking our dog and he is no more than 5 feet from me knocked out on a couch. I try to ignore this but it continues until I wake up my boyfriend. It then of course stops, and I let it go thinking I'm just hearing things. He falls back asleep and I settle back under the blanket with him. Then I hear what sounds like our cat outside whimpering, but our cat is on my lap purring. This is when I get up and make my BF go check it out. He walks the perimeter of the house as I peek my head out the slider to watch. We both hear branches snapping in the woods but no tracks where I heard the animals whining. Our motion like has been on for over 6 hours straight now and the noises have lessened but continued. Our cameras haven't picked up anything and there are still no tracks in the snow. I'm so confused and have no clue what to do. Any feedback or suggestions would be appreciated, thank you. All of her life, Frances T. has seen things, heard things, and felt them. Born into a family of sensitives, this was rather normal. In my family, you were considered odd if you didn't experience abnormal things, Frances says. We never talked much about our experiences or our feelings about them. We just accepted them as normal, which, in fact, to us they are but nothing could have prepared her family for what they encountered on a dark, desolate road in Arizona 20 years ago. It's a mysterious and traumatizing event that haunts them to this day. Frances's family had moved from Wyoming to Flagstaff, Arizona in 1978 shortly after her high school graduation. Sometime between 1982 and 1983, 20-year-old Frances, her father, Mother and her younger brother took a road trip back to Wyoming in the family pickup truck. The trip was a vacation to visit with friends in and around their old hometown. The only member of the family not present was her older brother, who was in the army and stationed at Fort Bragg, North Carolina. The course along Route 163 took them through the Navajo Indian Reservation and through the town of Kienta just south of the Utah border and the magnificent Monument Valley Navajo Tribal Park. Anyone who has lived in Arizona for any length of time knows that the Indian Reservation can be a beautiful if harsh place for non-natives. Many strange things happen out there, Francis says. Even my friend, a Navajo, warned us of traveling through the reservation, especially at night. Along with the warning, however, Francis's Native American friend blessed the family, and they were on our way. The trip to Wyoming was uneventful. But the trip back to Arizona along the same route more than justified the warning from Francis's friend. It still gives me goosebumps, she says. To this day, I have major anxiety attacks when I have to travel through the North Country at night. I avoid it at all costs. It was a warm summer night, about 10 p.m., When the family's pickup was heading south on 163, about 20 to 30 miles from the town of Kienta. It was a moonless night on this lonely stretch of road, so pitch black that they could only see just a few feet beyond the headlights. So dark that closing their eyes actually brought relief from the fathomless black. They had been driving for hours with Francis's father at the wheel, and the vehicle's passengers had long ago settled into quiet. Frances and her father sandwiched her mother in the truck's cab, while her brother enjoyed the night air in the back of the pickup. Suddenly, Frances's father broke the silence. We have company, he said. Frances and her mother turned around and looked out the backslider window. Sure enough, a pair of headlights appeared over the crest of a hill, then disappeared as the car went down, then reappeared. 
Frances commented to her father that it was nice to have company on this stretch of road. If something went wrong, neither vehicle and its passengers would be alone. Thunder began to rumble from the vast, clouded sky. The parents decided that their son should come into the cab before he got soaking wet from any rain that might fall. Frances opened the slider window and her little brother crawled in, squeezing between her and her mother. Frances turned to close the window and again noticed the headlights from the following car. They're still behind us, her father said. They must be going to either Flagstaff or Phoenix. We'll probably meet them in Kienta when we stop to fuel up. Frances watched as the car's headlights crested another hill and began its descent until it disappeared. She watched for them to reappear. And watched. They didn't reappear. She told her father that the car should have crested the other hill again, but hadn't. Maybe they slowed down, he suggested, or pulled over. That was possible, but it just didn't make sense to Francis. Why in the hell would a driver slow down or, worse yet, stop at the bottom of a hill in the middle of night, with nothing around for miles and miles? Francis asked her father. You'd think they'd want to keep sight of the car in front of them in case anything happened. People do weird stuff when they are driving, her father replied. So Francis kept watching, turning around every few minutes to check for those headlights, but they never did reappear. When she turned to look one last time, she noticed that the pickup was slowing down. Turning back to look out the windshield, she saw that they were rounding a sharp bend in the road, and her father had slowed the truck to about 55 miles per hour. And from that moment, Time itself seemed to slow down for Francis. The atmosphere changed somehow, taking on another worldly quality. Francis turned her head to look out the passenger window, when her mother screamed and her father cried out, Jesus Christ! What the hell is that? Francis didn't know what was happening, but one hand instinctively reached over and held down the button for the door lock, and the other tightly grabbed the door handle. She braced her back against her small brother and held firmly onto the door, still not knowing quite why. Her brother was now yelling, what is it? What is it? Her father immediately flipped on the interior cab light, and Francis could see that he was petrified. I have never, ever seen my father that scared in my whole life, Francis says. Not when he came home from his tours in Vietnam, not when he came home from special assignments, not even when someone tried to firebomb our house. Francis's father was as white as a ghost. She could see the hair on the back of his neck standing straight out, like a cat's, and so was the hair on his arms. She could even see the goosebumps on his skin. Panic was filling the small cab. Francis's mother was so frightened that she began shouting in her native Japanese in a high, squeaky voice as she frantically wrung her hands. The little boy just kept saying, oh my god. As the pickup sped around the bend in the road, Francis could see that the shoulder dropped off deeply into a ditch. Her father slammed on the brakes to prevent the truck from swerving into the ditch. As the pickup was slowing to a stop, something leapt out of the ditch at the side of the truck. And now Francis could clearly see what had started the panic. It was black and hairy and was eye level with the passengers in the cab. If this was a man, it was like no man Francis had ever seen. Yet despite its monstrous appearance, whatever this thing was, it wore a man's clothes. It had on a white and blue check shirt and long pants, I think jeans, Francis testifies. Its arms were raised over its head, almost touching the top of the cab. This creature remained there for a few seconds, looking into the pickup. And then the pickup was past it. Francis could not believe what she had seen. It looked like a hairy man or a hairy animal in man's clothing, she says. But it didn't look like an ape or anything like that. Its eyes were yellow and its mouth was open. Although time seemed frozen and distorted in this moment of fantastic horror, it was all over within a few minutes, the headlights, her little brother coming into the cab and the thing. By the time the family reached Kiena for gas, they had finally calmed down. Francis and her father climbed out of the pickup and checked the side of the truck to see if the creature had done any damage. 
They were surprised to see that the dust on the side of the truck was undisturbed, and so was the dust on the hood and roof of the truck. In fact, they found nothing out of the ordinary. No blood, no hair. Nothing. The family stretched their legs and rested at Kiena for about 20 minutes. The car that had been following them never did show up. It's as if the car simply vanished. They drove home to Flagstaff with the cab light on and the doors securely locked. I wish I could say this was the end of the story, Francis says, but it's not. A few nights later, around 11 p.m., Francis and her brother were awakened by the sounds of drumming. They looked out his bedroom window into the backyard, which was surrounded by a fence. At first, they saw nothing but the forest beyond the fence. Then the drumming grew louder, and three or four men appeared behind the wooden fence. It looked like they were trying to climb the fence, but couldn't quite manage to bring their legs up high enough and swing over, Francis says. Unable to get into the yard, the men began to chant. Francis was so scared, she slept with her little brother that night. Sometime later, Francis sought out her Navajo friend, hoping she could offer some explanation for these strange incidents. She told Francis that it was a skinwalker that had tried to attack her family. Skinwalkers are creatures of Navajo legend, which is that can shapeshift into animals. That a skinwalker attacked them was quite unusual, Francis's friend told her, as it had been a long time since she has heard of any activity about skinwalkers, and that they normally don't bother non-natives. Francis took her friend back by the fence where she had seen the strange men trying to climb in. The Navajo woman considered the scene for a moment, then revealed that three or four skinwalkers had visited the house. She said that they wanted the family, but could not gain access because something was protecting the family. Francis was astonished. Why? She asked. Why would the skinwalkers want her family? Your family has a lot of power, the Navajo woman said, and that they wanted it. Again she said that skinwalkers usually don't bother non-natives, but she believed that they wanted the family enough to expose themselves. Later that day, she blessed the perimeter of the property, the house, the vehicles and the family. We haven't been bothered by skinwalkers since then, Francis says. Then again, I haven't been back to Kiena. I have gone through other towns on the reservation, yes, at night. But I'm not alone, I carry a weapon. And I carry protective amulets. I might have come really close to a skinwalker while hunting alone. To start off this is a completely true story and I'm not too sure what my encounter was or if it was absolutely a skinwalker or not, but I wanted to post my story here to see if anyone had a similar experience. To add some context I live in the southern region of Colorado this encounter was near the Spanish Peaks in a public hunting area about two hours away from where I live, I was hunting there alone for about two years before this happened and haven't been back there since then. There's a big clearing at the start of the public land area and a dirt road going through it to the woods which takes you to a sort of valley. I was tracking a group of mule deer there for about a month and knew there was a small stream where they bed down it in the afternoon so I decided to head up there at about noon and wait for them at a small rock ledge facing the stream. I got there at about 2 o'clock, this was about a mile through some dense woods to get there. I sat down and unpacked my backpack to get some food and water and sat there for about an hour and saw nothing so decided to move up the valley to find them. It's then I noticed that it was getting to be a little darker outside when I realized it was maybe an hour and a half until dusk. It's then I noticed the woods around me were completely silent, as in no birds no squirrels running along the forest floor no wind absolutely no sound at all to the point where the loudest thing was my own footsteps this got me really uneasy and my gut was telling me to leave. I stopped for a second to listen for anything, it's then I heard the same sounding footsteps I was making, and I know the difference between what different animals sound like when walking in the woods but these were eerily human. They started to get louder and pick up in speed, at that point I got up and started to run as fast as I could to the road which is still almost a mile away, 
It took longer than it should have to get there and I don't know how long I was running for but it I know I ran almost full sprint for a while. It may be my imagination but I swear I could hear footsteps behind me the whole time. By the time I reached the clearing and saw my car the sun was about to set and it was almost too dark to navigate the woods. I bolted to my car and when I got and I absolutely kid you not there was a deer at the end of the clearing sitting there just casually walking back into the woods where I was just at. It was the most intense adrenaline filled experience I have ever had and I'll never go back there again not even with people. If anyone has a similar story I would really like to hear about it because I truly didn't believe in that kind of thing until this happened to me. Information on the setting. I live on a Native American reservation in western New York with a lot of people who have experienced many different encounters with spirits of sorts. Most of the reservation is surrounded by woods and roads with little to no homes or abandoned trailers. Now to my experience. I was sitting in my room and it was about 1 in the morning and I was feeling pretty brave and bored this night so I decided to walk to the water tower which was somewhat close to my house. I was about halfway to the water tower when I heard something eating something and walking in a small circle with a rotting smell I thought it was just a coyote because there's a lot around where I live. I continue walking and when I reach the entrance to the dirt path leading to the water tower I stop when a wave of fear and discomfort hits me, I brush it off thinking it's just because it's late and I'm outside. As I get to the water tower I hear something approach me. When I look a little closer and the light from the water tower shines on the figure, I see a withering sick deer that looked like it was limping. I step back a little shocked from what I'm seeing. I slightly glance towards the side and I hear bones cracking coming from the sick deer and it stands on its hind legs and lets out a sickly wheeze. I then book it back to my house while hearing it run towards me sorta of yelping and wheezing in agony. From all the adrenaline built up I ended up running faster than I ever imagined and made it home safely. To this day I never walk to any place more than 5 minutes away at night. Horrible scream heard in the Tonto National Forest, Arizona. When I was 15, so 6 years ago now, my parents sent me on a two-month trip in a program called Anasazi, a program for troubled youth with drug and mental problems and occasionally used as an alternative to juvenile detention. I was in this program because my parents caught me smoking weed Lamau. During this time you and 3 to 10 other teens and 3 adult supervisors called trail walkers will hike 150 miles around the Tonto Basin, moving in the day, and sleeping at night. There are often no trials or roads it was mainly bushwhacking through spiny plants and such. You get a vegetarian food pack that gets filled every week with a replacement of new leaders for the week so they can bring the new food and lead us for that week. Now that you know where I'm let's get on with the story. During the beginning of my time it rained almost every other day. And was January in the northern parts of Arizona, so it was very cold. Our gear was constantly wet especially my sleeping bag, it made it very difficult to make friction fires and stay sane but we managed. It was my second week in and several hours passed since the sun went down and all the teens went to bed. My sleeping bag was very wet and I could not sleep well so I gathered up my bag to dry over the campfire. Usually the supervisors would sleep in shifts in the night so there's always someone keeping watch, but for some reason all three were still awake. I walked over and asked one of the leaders to hold the other end of my bag over the fire to dry it out. After several hours of drying, it got to a manageable point and I was going to go to sleep but decided to hold the bag on my own over the fire and talk to the leaders, while we were talking about something I don't recall. We heard the most terrifying scream one can imagine, directed towards us not even 50 feet away in the black abyss beyond the trees. It was not a scream of terror, it was one in which to try and cause that to others. The scream sounded like an adult man-mountain lion hybrid creature, screaming at the top of its lungs to scare us. It sounded so angry, man-like while sounding feral and guttural like large cat. The scream only lasted a second, just a quick, loud wah, then silence. We were all terrified, 
I remember seeing the leader's faces with wide eyes, terror and worry while looking at me to see my reaction. Although I was scared I chuckled nervously and said WTF is that? And tried to shrug it off as a cougar or some unknown animal to me, as I knew I would be staying six more weeks and don't want to think of scary creatures out there. After some time I collected myself and went to sleep. During this time I've heard of skinwalkers once while in a chutch camp outing as a child but thought it was a story to scare kids. Years after this experience, the scream haunted me and I began researching, no animals known to man make this particular scream and especially in the way it was done, it was a man-like scream aimed at us, not some bobcats yelling at each other, or a cougar yell or a coyote scream. One day I found a plethora of skinwalker content online and realize how the native people know these exist, and wonder if I heard one. Compared to the scream I heard, the supposed skinwalker screams you can find online in videos sound fake and hilarious, nothing I've heard in my life even closely resembles the scream I've heard, it was so unique and terrifying. It was something horror movie directors can only imagine to have on set. I'm unsure if this was exactly a skinwalker but I can assure you that I heard something that wasn't a known animal or human. If you have any theories or ideas of what it is. My experience. The first time and only time I ever encountered one of these beings I was 12 years old hunting on a large ranch on the Texas-Mexico border in Del Rio, Texas. It was early in the morning before sunrise and my dad dropped me off at the deer stand before the feeders went off. As I was sitting in the stand I got this weird gut feeling that something was watching me. At first I thought it was just 12 year old me being scared of being alone in the dark but the feeling grew more and more intense, it was dark so I decided to open the door and shine my light and see if anything was there and as I was closing the door out of the corner of my eye I saw something dart away at an incredible speed, I just figured it was a jack rabbit or coyote or something. I never got the feeling again the rest of the morning. That evening I went to the stand about 4.30 so I could hunt before the sun went down. As the sun was setting about 6 o'clock I got the eerie feeling again but this time it was more intense than before. I looked through all the windows and couldn't see anything standing around so I just shrugged it off. A few minutes later I had to take a leak and the sun was fading so dark you could hardly see the deer at the feeder. I opened the door and in front of me was a mangled looking coyote with hardly any hair and missing hide around its stomach, it was standing on two back legs and as soon as it saw me it darted away again at incredible speed and I have never went hunting on that ranch again. These are my two sightings. If you think you have seen these two posted here before you aren't wrong because I did. That was an old account that I don't use much now unless I am mistaken and I posted it with this one very early on. First sighting about 8 am time frame at least the morning before noon time. Sunny with good visibility. Dark grey creature I mistook for a rock originally but shape and color looked wrong for any rocks in the area. Probably more than 5 feet tall but not 6. I'm 5 apostrophe 1 and this might have been closer to that. Second sighting 6 to 8 p.m. behind main school building with group. Windy night but enough light still to make out the general form of something running on all fours. Was more Gollum or Dover demon like and lighter gray compared to the first one and smaller most likely. I would say this one at full height might have been 4 apostrophe 5 to 5 feet tall. The area around the university has woods but it's residential and has plenty of houses and apartments. There are two busy roads on either side of where the second one was seen. The first one was in a small fenced in area that looks like where maintenance would have a small building for pumps and things of that sort. It wasn't somewhere people would go in often. I don't know if this is the right sub or not, but somehow I found myself here. This is a throwaway account because even to this day I'm not sure if I should question my sanity. It's going to be a bit long, but I'm not sure how many details will matter in figuring out what exactly I experienced. 
It's been years since I've had the dream. I grew up in the same countryside area even though I moved around a lot within the area. My parents were divorced, my mom lived in the small city and my dad stayed rural. It's important I mention that I have a brother two years older than me, this will be relevant later. He's the only other person who knows, and didn't have a bit of doubt or hesitation in believing what I'm about to share. When I was a kid, say second grade, we moved back to the country from the city after my parents split. My brother and I would play in the woods near the house, we lived on a private road which just means a long gravel road with no outlet that it houses every couple acres. There was a shared green belt but not many kids, so my brother and I had free roam to claim whatever forest forts we came across. It was great. We always had a blast and would climb the trees or use sticks to build hideouts. There was stinging nettle that would guard the trees but it never stopped us from playing. I should mention, this is PNW territory, Cascadia. As kids we would have a lot of deja vu moments and would always call out whenever one occurred because to us it was just a fun coincidence. These different deja vus occurred so frequently we always thought it was normal. They still occur for me, but nothing like when I was younger. Sometimes I experience deja vus from dreams I've had years ago. I thought I was done with a dream, but I found this sub and when you all describe these things my eyes begin to water uncontrollably. I'm not an emotional person, and typically only sad movies get the waterworks going, but even as I type this my eyes are watering at the thought of that dream. It was the same thing every time. Just one scene. A single setting. My typical dreams have changing scenes and I'm usually a different character, not myself, unless it's a deja vu dream. In this dream I was myself. I was laying in a bed that was mine in a room that was mine, and I felt safe and familiar with the setting. The only catch was I had no idea where this room was, and I had never seen it before in my life. It wouldn't be until the age of 15 that I'd find myself in that room, in that exact setting, with the same low glow of the Christmas lights I had decorated with. Still, I wouldn't know this until 15. Even when I first moved into the room I did not realize where I was until the final night when the deja vu hit. It would be years after moving to that house that my dream came true, as I used to say when I was little. I was still in second grade at this point when the dream first began. I was laying in my bed, in my room, with the low pink glow of the Christmas lights, multicolored. From where the bed sat, just in front of the large window, I rested my head on the pillows and my head turned to see the door frame to my room. I would always sleep with the door open, still do, and in my dream the door was wide open. I looked out to it, and it wouldn't make sense until I was older, but beyond my door, I was on the second floor, was a foyer entrance that was open concept up to the second floor. The stairs lead from the front door and wrapped along the wall to the landing at the top of the stairs. There was a large chandelier that hung from the ceiling in the middle, and above the front door was a large window on the second story window. As I look at my door frame I see it standing there. I don't know what it is, but it's tall. The top of its head is cut off by the door frame, and its posture is standing slouched. It's skinny. Lanky. But its limbs aren't limbs. They're like bones and they were long. Its arms hung by its side straight down where its hands nearly rested by its knees. And the hands were large compared to its body. Its torso was broad shoulders down to a skinny waist, but inhumanly so. It was too small for its height. And its legs. They were bent backwards is the best way I can describe it. Its bone formation was weird too. As if between the bone structure the skin was so thin it was almost see-through. I would have missed that, if it weren't for the window in the foyer behind it. All of a sudden there was a flash of lightning and I could see it. I could see through the skin. I could see the shadow of the bones. And I could see its face. The head was elongated in a way but also small, it wasn't normal. It had white hair in patches that were stringy and down to its shoulders in some parts. It looked like it had rags hanging on its body as if they were garments torn from overuse and wear. And its face. 
there were dark spots where its eyes should have been. Not that it didn't have eyes, just that I couldn't see them. But it saw me. It stood there and just looked at me. Staring. Head tilting. As frightening as it might sound, I wasn't afraid. I had no fear in this dream, I was calm, and I was comfortable, but I never moved. I just stayed in bed. Lying there. Staring back. The lightning flashes once and after that the dream is over. I continue to have this same exact dream for years. Not every night, but frequently enough that I never get a chance to forget it. Then one year my mom starts dating a guy and eventually moves in with him. He lived in a large house in the mountains. It was private but it shared a fence line with a horse farm. Some nights you could hear the horses neighing and upset. I remember their names. Bear and Maverick. The owner would let us feed them apples and carrots. It was pleasant. But the home, it was not. It was dark inside. My brother and I would sleep in the bedrooms that were down a long hallway that had no windows. It was dark without the lights on. The hallway was also off of a large foyer, but this one was much more grand. The home was surrounded by trees as well because PNW. My brother's room was right next to mine, but his had a glass sliding door that looked over the front woods of the property. One night I wake up to the commotion of him screaming loud enough for my mom and Bill to come running down from the second floor master suite that sat atop the foyer. I was in third grade at this point. I wake up and see the hallway light is on from the cracked open door. I get out of bed and see my mom and her boyfriend are in my brother's room. He's in bed, my mom sitting next to him, and my mom's boyfriend is over in the corner looking outside the glass sliding door and checking the closet. I didn't understand why at the time. I thought maybe my brother had a bad dream from the scary movies we watched, but we grew up with them and they weren't scary for us to the point of nightmares. I couldn't figure out what would scare him so bad to make his face so contorted in fear. My mom said it was the movie Pumpkin Head that did it, and it wouldn't be until later that I would realize it wasn't Pumpkin Head but a creature similar. After this night happens we never speak of it again, and he never sleeps in that room again. I remember my mom mentioned she heard the horses that night. We moved from that house shortly after to an island off of Seattle. Fast forward to age 14. We are now living in the house in the countryside with our dad. Still surrounded by forest but in a different community. I'm getting into my drawings and I'm trying to explore more creative limits. I wanted to try drawing creatures. My brother and I were at the kitchen table with an after school snack. I was drawing my creatures and were talking, and then I start telling him about this dream I used to have. It had been a while since I had it, but it started to reoccur again. I couldn't describe the creature well so I drew it. Once I finished it and showed him he froze. He started pointing at the picture, careful not to touch it, saying that's it. That's the thing. That's what I saw standing by the glass sliding door at Bill's. It had been years since this event. So long that my mom and Bill had been separated for a few years now. When I hear him say this I pause. My brother and I were always close growing up, but I couldn't understand how we could both share the same dream creature. This is when I began to become uneasy in the home. When I had to be in my room before sunset so I wouldn't have to walk up the stairs at night. So I wouldn't have to reach my hand outside my door to turn the lights off. I could feel the dark corners in the home and the hair standing up on my neck. I didn't know why I was so uneasy though. I still didn't realize yet that my room was the room for my dream. I would move my furniture around a lot and redecorate. It wasn't until the last time I moved my room around that the deja vu finally happened. I resorted to sleeping with my head under the blanket for weeks afraid I would wake up to the creature at my door. I don't know if the final dream was really a dream. I don't know if I ever saw the creature for real or if it stayed only in that dream. But my brother saw it, and he was terrified. Only that one time. But it stuck with him all those years. We never talk about it. I haven't brought it up since the drawing, but he didn't doubt me. He didn't think I was crazy or losing it. 
He believed me, and he was afraid. We moved out of that home shortly after. Growing up our life was tumultuous being brought up in a post-divorce family with stepmoms and kids moving in and out. We eventually went to live with our mom after I turned 16 at the end of my sophomore year. Since moving out of that rural area I've never had that dream again. I can still picture it perfectly. I wasn't afraid of it, but still my eyes are watering like crazy having to write this out. I don't know what about it makes me cry. Maybe because it's so unbelievable, but at the same time it was real. Since the creatures you all described sounded so similar to this one I thought maybe I could get some closure on what happened. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe for daily stories. We at Horror Den of Misfits really enjoy this, and your support would be appreciated.